discuss the applicability of systems analysis in geomorphology. Uh, now, you can start the answer with a definition or an elaboration. See what is systems analysis brought in by Bertel and Fai. It helps studies complex systems, multivariate functions. And in geomorphology, it was brought by Shorley and Berry and BJL Berry. Two or three lines, man. Then you can move on towards. Maybe you can have a box here if you want to have a box. What are the merits of systems analysis? It helps us appreciate complex functioning. It helps us develop models. It helps us predict future outcomes. It helps us appreciate real life processes, planning of flow systems. Systems can be approximated to any scales. Okay, small scale, large scale, okay, it can be scaled. In geomorphology, there are following applications. One is understanding landform and slope development using systems approach. For example, appreciating Davis model, okay, under close systems analogy, understanding things model and process theories under open systems we have uh, we have example of uh, a stroller he has used systems approach for dynamic slope so this is one with three examples the next number two a systems approach in appreciating slopes and their stability related to hydrological processes. So how percolation, how runoff impacts landslides, how it impacts soil slums, how it impacts slope collapses. Now for this one, I will suggest you could use one diagram. Yeah. Page number 567. The third is a systems approach in studying isostatic and tectonic balances. Uh, have you uh, heard about earthquake prediction? And we talk about you know, how how the area is related by the process of tectonics. Okay, so we can have mountains, valleys, cracks, rift valleys. So systems approach can be used to develop and monitor earthquake proneness. Earthquake proneness. They say Himalayas may the energy release and potential disasters. They model this under the earthquake prediction models. So use this for understanding tectonic balance and isostatic balance. Tectonic balance and isostatic balance. This is your main application systems. I forgot, one more point, yes, I forgot. The fourth point is uh, systems approach, approach and Channel hydrology. Channel hydrology, we're talking about floods, siltation, we're talking about uh, soil erosion and deposition. Okay? So systems approach is also used in channel hydrology. Uh, now, if you look up page number 12 and 13, this is not exactly the way I've taught you. Because the question was the application of systems approach in geomorphology. Now these two pages, they tell you something about what systems approach is. Okay, page number 12 and page 13, particularly page 13 may, the second paragraph. Page 13, second paragraph, that has something about understanding negative feedback in the slope stability. 
Like your conclusion, like and we can talk about that a systems approach in geomorphology is a, a recent approach. This is mostly post 1960s development. Systems approach is related more to quantification and mathematical modeling. It's more related to quantification and mathematical modeling. Systems approach helps us appreciate. Systems approach uses multi-factor approach in developing models. Uh, there is one section I would want you to read here. Page number nine. Page number nine, first column is under recent trends, the first paragraph, post 1950s, okay, 50s, 60s, can I add here 50s, geomorphology has undergone sea change in methods and approaches to study. Okay, the recent trends include uh, criticism of DVC and model, development of landforms, efforts to replace cyclic, non cyclic, descriptive models. And what are the additions? And additions are Okay, inductive method has been replaced by deductive method. Introduction of models and systems approach. Emergence of process geomorphology. Can you all see that paragraph? From that paragraph, in one, in one or two sentences, try to end up how systems approach is a more recent trend in geomorphology. Okay, so this is part of so use of systems approach is part of shift in focus and methods in geomorphology from historical descriptive approach to more mathematical process oriented approach. Why are mathematical models better than hardware models in geomorphology certain mark question okay let me explain this concept then i'll give you the answer okay now what are models these are topics you cannot do on your own then i'll tell you what pages to read up what are models models are essentially okay they are a representation and depiction of reality real life functioning and processes models models help in appreciating how natural systems operate if they are constructed if they're constructed using hardware elements hardware elements ka matlab hota hai you are using objects you are using you are using some space you are using certain devices okay. you are using certain physical moving parts we call these as hardware models for example for example i have to show uh, rainfall okay so the hardware model of rainfall can be I can have a tub, small tub container. I can punch holes. Okay. I can have some system on the top which I can regulate, open or close the holes. And I show rainfall. Okay. By opening the holes, water falling down. I can have maybe a wooden plank that shows a slope. And as water falls down, it runs on the slope and goes into maybe a bigger tub that looks like a sea. So in this model, I've used I've used objects. I've used a tub, a larger tub, a wooden plank. That this model occupies a physical space. I've put it in some place. This model is using devices. I have some machines. It can operate. Some valves that can operate. There's a pipe that fills up the tank. So when I have a model that is physically depicting, so what this is doing is that this model is this model is physically depicting 
and such type of models are also called as analog models analog models they will be based on comparing locations they are based on comparing developments through time okay so so why are mathematical models better so geomorphic systems and geomorphic processes are very complex okay. they involve diverse landforms they involve tectonic forces and processes the geomorphic systems operate over large time scales over millions and millions of years the geomorphic systems they operate over large scales most events most events are related to distant factors cyclic time ke matlab hota hai over large time scale okay they they involve uh, events that are relatively very distinct factors so what happens in india may be related to what's happening in europe look at the the scale of the location involved what's happening on the surface is linked to what's happening in the mantle thousands of kilometers inside there are interconnections between climate atmosphere and geomorphic processes theek okay? hai and then you say that because of these complexities it is difficult difficult to abstract difficult to simplify geomorphic conditions and geomorphic processes in lab conditions using physical hardware hence the importance of mathematical modeling hence the importance of computer simulations and approximations many geomorphic processes are related probabilistically you can never be sure about okay, what exactly will happen and therefore okay mathematical modeling in geomorphology will also include stochastic modeling stochastic equations stochastic okay models are based on probability okay now i will give you one more question discuss the significance of climate in geomorphological studies or in geomorphological processes page number 15 in fact hardware models agar padhna hai aapko na this previous one if you want to read up something on these models page number 14 and page number 15 all the my recommendation is don't depend on this don't depend on this i have taken up the statement from this page itself page 15 may i have picked it up and page 15 may equation by k j gregory which says the landforms are the function of geomaterial and processes operating over time an example of mathematical model page number 15 geomorphology okay now come towards climate and geomorphology now i don't intend to teach this to you just tell you the page number and i presume you will take it on from there a short note of 10 or 15 marks okay now page number for the next question i said discuss the significance of climate in geomorphological studies or discuss the significance of climate in geomorphological processes okay this i always mention to be studied page 91 mein hai geomorphic processes and climate can you all open up please page 91 mein hai geomorphic processes and climate okay you read this up what are the processes in the dry conditions and hot conditions processes in moist 
and warm conditions? What are the processes in cool, humid conditions? Processes of tundra and periglacial conditions. Okay. So how does climate impact? Climate impacts in the form of latitudes. Climate impacts in the form of altitude variations and climate also impacts vegetation. So climate and latitude, this becomes a kind of a zonal pattern of geomorphic process. Do you all remember this word zonal process? Do you all remember this word zonal process? What does zonal process mean? Zonal process implies, implies some kind of latitudinal patterns. Page number 91. Page 91. Okay. Geomorphic processes and climatic controls. Yes. Zonal ka matlab hota hai. Latitude. Climate also varies altitude wise. And similarly, the geomorphic processes will also vary in terms of altitude. And climate impacts vegetation. Vegetation can impact slopes and denudation processes. There are a couple of graphs in this. Look up the graph on page number 92. In what type of rainfall and temperature, what type of processes. And then I will suggest do copy the table on page number 99. A table given by Peltier. Peltier's, what are the processes in glacial conditions? Page 99 men. What are the processes in periglacial conditions? What are the processes of the boreal, maritime? So don't write all of them. You can write arid, semi-arid, savanna. You can mention selva, wet and warm conditions. Mention glacial, periglacial, boreal. So you can finish the table in six type of climate and the processes associated. Okay, given by okay, Peltier. You should also know this concept called as what is morphogenetic regions? Is it related? These are regions based on climate control processes. Okay, the concept of morphogenetic or morphoclimatic regions is based on the concept that climatic geomorphology and each geomorphic process produces its own characteristic assemblage of landforms. And then we have the ideas of Shorey. With the ideas of Budel, J B U D E L, page 98, first two paragraphs. So try writing this as your own answer. And how do you conclude this? The conclusion can be on the basis of how climate change can impact change in processes. Okay? So melting of tundra, what can happen? Melting of permafrost, what can happen? Heavy rainfall. In the tropical areas, you can talk about how landslides are related to climatic conditions. Slope stability a link to climatic conditions. Okay, so how climate impacts, and you can also put the debate of L.C. King, L.C. King, and his concept of climatic uniformitarianism. Climate does not control. Geomorphic processes. Okay? This could be the conclusion. Okay, so climate and uh, this is one question I think can be important for you. How does climate control the geomorphic processes? Mm -hmm.